Hi and welcome. Hey, today we're going to talk about these four items right here. Set up a form using variable for items. Modify the fields needed in the form. Modify the form fields and then populate read-only data from a list um, from the form into a list. So we're going to go over these four topics today in this video. So uh, we're going to do that using this application that we're building called Priority Manager together. And if you see other videos, a lot of the videos focus on this application as the example. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to this with step-by-step -step instructions for you as well so that we can walk through every step together uh, so that you can easily get where you need to go. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's first of all talk about this variable, set up a form using a variable. And there are multiple ways to um, really get information into a form. And I want to show you um, the difference between a form, which we see right here, which is a form. So if you click on this here, let's go ahead. I know you can't see the whole screen there, but let's see. Notice this is the form itself, the entire form. Okay, and the form's called this, form task edit large field. The data source is set to priority tasks, but it's a form with one column vertical in an edit mode. And if you look over here, you can see the form listed and then all of the fields within the form. And these are the fields right here. The key thing to remember here as we set up this form, and I want to make sure that we don't lose track of... Um, what we're talking about here, that's why I write it out, is here we're talking about this first section here. One approach to a form for an autofill is to make sure that all the fields are approximately the same size. So for example, let's go down. I think I put one in here under pick my tasks. Let's see, there we go. So this is a sample form, for example that I just built uh, to do some documentation. Notice here that all the fields, with the exception of title here, because I adjusted it, but all the fields are pretty much the same size. Do you see that? Now, there's a strategy behind them all being the same size because when you're setting it up, if you look here, you can adjust the columns. So let's go ahead and adjust the columns to four and notice it automatically adjusts everything. Notice I still have snap to columns activated. So I have four columns here. There's four of them there. I have snap to column uh, working here. So it's automatically doing everything. And I can change this to horizontal if I want. I can go vertical. It's very easy to do because everything is in a snap to column. And the data set is approximately the same size. So here's an example right here. Look at all of these fields here. They're all approximately the same size. Now, why am I saying this? Because when, you, when we go back to this example here, this section here at the top of the screen, notice there's lots of similar sizes, but then you get down here to task tags. Look how long that one is. And then these guys here, look how big they are. Okay, so when we activate this, this screen, we want it so we have maximum place to put notes, right? But it's the modification of this information that becomes a challenge. So we're going to go through the steps on how to do it, but just a word uh, to the wise. If you have a bunch of data here that is the same size, use one form for this data. So in this example, we're right here form task edit only. We could have a second form here. I don't, but we could have a second form that is just, um, whoops, where's that form? Right here. Well, I started it off to just be large, large, um, notice here, large fields, but I ended up adding the small fields anyways. But the point is I could have two forms, one form on the top here and another form on the bottom. And then when I hit my save action, which we're going to go into in another video, but when I hit my save action, which is right here, I'll just submit both forms. Okay? So there is a way to do this, and that's one way that you might want to do it. I know we spent a lot of time but on this one topic, but it will save you 
a ton of time. And really today this video is about how do we save time. So here we're going to use a form to collect information and we're going to populate the form from a variable. Okay, so let's see what that means. So when I'm looking here, notice here I have my task name already come over. Where did that come from? Well, if I go back here and I look at this, let's just say here, build this report. If I click on this next button here, notice here, build service report automatically flows into this form. It auto populates all of the fields that it knows about. Again, we're gonna go back to this one. Here, it's auto populating everything within the form itself. This is a good thing, we want this to happen. And so to do that, let's see how we actually do that. What happens when we auto populate, let's go back real quick and we can look at that button real quick. So here when we click on this button and we go to on select, notice what's happening. Notice the blue lines here. The blue lines indicate that this record is selected. This one record from within this list, this happens to be a list, could be any data source, happens to be a list, this item is selected. That means that we're going to pass this variable right here, var task, uh, var edit task. So if we look at our variables and we go down and it should be under global and we're going to just search for it, var edit, and there it is right there. And you can see where it's being used. It's being used all over this application. Why? Because what we're doing is we're collecting any information in this record, which happens to be from the data source. We drill into this gallery, priority task. So when we click on this bad boy, it automatically sets whatever this record is, sets it into memory. So when we get to the form itself, it's actually pulling over the data from that record. It's giving us all our past data, and when we save, it's going to save data there as well. And this is a really important thing to remember. To set this up, you have to, there's two things you need to know. First of all, let's go back to the form itself. So when we go back to the form, excuse me, it just takes a minute to scroll down there. There we go. Notice that the data source right now, if you notice right here, data source is set to priority test. That's where the data is coming from. And when you make an edit, that's where the data is going. But let's look here for item, for example. Notice that the item is set to that variable. So the item is all of the items in here. The data source is the task. And you can see that either here or again, you could go to here and say, go to item and see it there as well. But that's the variable and that's how we're passing the information. So, um, okay, let's continue. So I'm not gonna get through all four of these. I guess I'm just gonna get through one of them and then we'll continue on. So to create the new screen is pretty simple. If you don't know how to do that, we're gonna do that here, but we're going to go ahead and show you that real quick. Edit, and then you can just type in, if if you want, I always do form. It's an edit form that we're adding. So that's pretty simple. And then we're gonna rename that edit form. Now why? I'm a big believer in making sure everything's named, at least at the top level. Maybe not all of this, because it already has good names on it, but FRM form and then what the form is about so that I know what it is, where it is, okay? And so you can see that here just as a review. If you wanna do screen captures, Great, we're gonna insert, hit edit form. Then we're gonna connect it to the data source. Remember, the data source is priority tasks in this example, so you'll see this connect to data, connect it to your data source. And then, of course, we're going to, so there's the data source right there. And then this is what we talked about with the item equal to var edit task. So that is how you set up the initial form. That's all we're talking about here in this video today is just setting up that form to use variables from a different data set. Stay tuned for other videos and we're going to go ahead and explore these other items 
right here of modifying the fields and maybe we can get these all into one video but i try to keep my videos under 10 minutes so uh, good luck and come back for the other videos thanks